today we're going to be testing out an experiment that we're about to go do with our kids' school. And what we're trying to make in this experiment is like a train um, smokestack. <laughs> Good thing it worked. So like that puff, 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 like what you see out of a train smokestack. My kiddos are obsessed with trains, so I think they'll really get a kick out of this. So I've got baking soda that I'm putting in here, and this is a one liter graduated cylinder. I like to use the one liter, it's so convenient. Um, I've got about 50 mils worth of baking soda left, but we'll try it out and see what happens. Um, and then my other supplies are regular old vinegar and dry ice, which if you need help acquiring, just give me a call and I'll help you get some. So I put my baking soda in first. I'm going to put in my dry ice. And I'm not measuring volumes here or anything. Okay. And so we've got the baking soda separated by dry ice so that when the vinegar comes into contact with it, it has to go through the dry ice to get to it. Now you notice you're already seeing some fog and your students might notice that and say, hey, what's going on? Is this a reaction? And the answer is no, right? Because the baking soda is not reacting with the dry ice. Dry ice is solid carbon dioxide, CO2 solid. And it is just subliming, meaning going from the solid phase to the gas phase without first becoming a liquid, right? So when your students see this, this uh, smog, uh, smog, fog coming off, okay? They might think, oh, it's smoke, or oh, it's a reaction, but it's not, okay? Just remember to point out to them that that's sublimation, which is a physical change, not a chemical change. Now, what we're going to do now is a chemical change, because when the CO, I mean, excuse me, when the baking soda reacts with the acetic acid, that will be our chemical reaction. So this is a nice demo on both chemical and physical changes as well. There we go. So you might have to just play around with it until you get the right volume. Again, I wasn't measuring volumes. But the neat thing is that it gives that effect. And why is it doing that? Okay, so these bubbles are full of CO2. And that's why you get the effect that you're seeing here. The difference in masses of the gases will give us that visual observation have your train music playing. Now you can also try adding some food coloring to this. It will not affect the color of the bubbles, the CO2, just FYI. It would only affect the aqueous part, okay? So just, just so you know, if you're trying to make blue fog, that won't work. Um, but you know, you could add your food coloring to, to let the students see the, the aqueous part here. And then this will keep going for a while. Um, if you watched our other video on limiting reagent between baking soda and vinegar, you can set this up so that you have one being the limiting reagent or the other. Um, and then again, it's all about playing with proportions. But this is a fun experiment because you can get this choo-choo kind of effect. You can talk about chemical and physical changes and the differences between them. So I hope you enjoyed it and go try it with your students. <laughs>